Hello, everybody, and welcome to Tissues of the Day. Ha ha ha, David forgot to record. <laughs> forgot to record video the first time. Oopsie, oopsie doopsie. Weeo. Uh, so this is our second attempt after trying for 20 minutes to talk about values. My name is David. David doesn't value people's time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> this is just a desperate plea to have more quality time. You know you love it. It's true. <laughs> Uh, my name, my name is David and my co-host today is Robert Mackay. And yeah, like I said, we're here to talk about values. So, um, great. This is our second try. So it's going to be even smoother. Uh, what are <laughs> values? Values are something that, <laughs> important to us. <laughs> this is going to be a train wreck because <laughs> I'm so, uh, <laughs> giddy about making a mistake. Okay. So values are what you care about. There is an animation that I made once called Thinking and Monkey Mind, which actually covers this in a bit more broad detail because the whole point of that is to remind us to focus. And if we don't have values to take care of our focus, um, then we'll just keep doing random things that aren't important to us and we'll feel dissatisfied because we don't know who we are, essentially. Values are a step toward having a bit more self-knowledge. And when you have that self-knowledge, you know what you can ask people for. And you know uh, when you're not really getting what you need. So I highly recommend people to take a look at their values if they haven't at some point in their life. And, and actually, you made a... this is something I didn't uh, uh, say in the first recording. Was, like, values become, like, a bit of a like boring subject in some corporate cultures where uh there's like some like long drawn out discussion where like a board of directors or like upper management in a company go through this process of trying to identify the values of a company and it just gets so dumb because it's like designed by committee and it's for a company and it's just like i don't know i just don't know sometimes with like corporate values um but I understand that they're a way of, like, trying to bring a culture into alignment. You work more in corporate culture than I do. Did you have anything to say about that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's tons of it, right? There's mission statements, there's uh, corporate values, and I think it can be. Like, if it's done wrong, it can be very vapid, it can be misrepresentative. But I think what yeah. is important about it is that it's good to be able to establish it and be able to point to it so that you end up having a common language. And you also <laughs> then have a sense of like, what are the kind of people that we hire who align with this? Uh, so that we not only align within ourselves, but we align with those who bring into the fold, kind of like, you know, individuals where they try to find a partner, right? Yeah. So it is important, but it's it totally can get very corporate BSE. Yeah. Yeah. So, whatever. Uh, the reason we decided we wanted to talk about values today is because Robert and I have had pretty interesting conversations recently about relationships and, like, personal satisfaction in friendships, but also about accountability. Um, so we'll be talking about all of this in today's episode. We're going to give you a very broad overview of a list of values, and then we're each going to talk about a top five of ours, and then how to make them actionable and making us help us feel more aligned with how our values feel in real life. How's yeah. that sound, Robert? Sounds good. And one particular Yay. thing that you said in our first take that I really liked mm -hmm. was that I think it's really good to understand your own values, because if you don't understand yourself, then you don't know what you can ask for or what uh, is upsetting you when you don't get it. Uh, you had this like really salient point where somebody's just like, I'm upset and I don't know why. And it might be because you don't understand your values or you don't understand uh, what you're not getting or what the other person doesn't also value. Uh, so I think that's really cool because it, it is important to understand those. And sometimes it's easier just to have them written down or to go through a little exercise on it rather than just leaving up to chance. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. So, Robert, would you be able to go through the list at random? Mm -hmm. uh, and just to get, get our minds thinking about what a value even is um, and sure. words that sound like values. <laughs> sure. I'm going to go through this. Uh, there's a big old list. It's two pages of values from this exercise we went through. And some of them are marked with an asterisk, which represents ones that in this list 
are described to be as is described to be toxic, neurotic, inauthentic, or lower self. So there's like the naughty ones as I described them before, but they're going to be part of what I list, at least some of them. Here's some examples. Adventure, beauty, being liked, comfort, community, consciousness, contribution, control, creativity, equality, excitement, family, fame, freedom, fun, honesty, humor, joy, knowledge, kindness, loyalty, modesty, order, peace, playfulness, productivity, professionalism, purpose, service, significance, status, strength, tradition, travel, truth, variety, wealth, wisdom. Ugh, love it. And something uh, important to mention is that like, even with the toxic or neurotic type values um you can even have values that are like being pushed into an extreme like any quote-unquote healthy value could be pushed to an unhealthy extreme and there could be a value that like this one guy who made this one list <laughs> thought might be toxic um and could actually be used in a healthy way or at least if you're aware of it to not shy away from it and just be like okay well if i am really if I care a lot about this thing, um, like, why do I care so much about this thing? Is there something even deeper um, that could be turned toward, like, a healthy thing or or whatever, you know? Yeah. I think a perfect example would be something that probably innately sounds good, like being giving or charitable. Mm -hmm. But you can totally take that to an extreme where you give so much of yourself, you actually neglect yourself. So <sighs> it's like any of those values can go to the dark side. Definitely. Um and so you asked me before, uh, and so I, I will ask you, uh, what was your experience putting this list together? Yes. So going through it, I did this more recently. I literally just finished up the exercise before starting this podcast, whereas David did it much longer, much longer, a further period in the past than <laughs> I, uh, and actually had a chance to kind of get a little bit more in detail with it. But I just wanted to go over this because I feel like if anyone else does this, you need to know that you're not crazy when you're going through this process. Um, I had the big list of values and I just started by highlighting ones that were of interest to me, ones that I feel that I value. And I started just marking off so many, like tons of them, even some of the naughty ones. And I was like, this is bad. I shouldn't be doing this. But I was like, you know what? No, I'm just going to trust the process, go through it and be honest. And I just started knocking them off, highlighting them. Then I went through and I identified the ones that I thought were like my top 10. And I couldn't even get to a top 10. I got to a top 12, but it's a much smaller list than my original amount. And so I started uh, marking those. And what happened was, is that I noticed as I went through and started dwindling it, I started comparing them. So I started, being, started noticing, I was like, well, this value is kind of like a synonym of this value, or at least would encompass this value. So I started like, prioritizing them and seeing which one was like the master value or the bigger value because I was like that is probably more significant um, or more valuable to me so I started doing that um, I even um, started like going through and recognizing that some of these were things that I might have valued in others as opposed to whether or not I value it. So I had to kind of stop myself and like backtrack and make sure that I was picking ones that were values that I hold dear and close to my heart. And I think then innately you will find that in another person too. So yeah, so that's how For I went sure. through it. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of that is super relatable. Like that was my experience going through this thing as well i think i got it down to 15 and i was like there's no way <laughs> like these are all these are all important um and then eventually yeah you like whittle it and whittle it and maybe it's true maybe you do just have 12 distinct values like who cares <laughs> um and yeah. then uh the other thing i wanted to mention regarding my process of like going through these coming up with definitions is like it's also quite normal to pick a value or be defining a value and as you do so it makes you emotional that's actually a really good sign if it gives you this like strong response of like visualizing yourself uh either like achieving or actualizing this value in your life 
Um, if the thought of that is getting you like choked up or like really excited or whatever, or the thought of not having this value uh, just sounds like unbearable. Um, yeah, that's a pretty pretty serious sign that like it's it's in there. It's super important to you. Um, Did you pick any of the naughty ones? I picked one. Um, in, uh, at some point, I'm sure I did. I mean, like, to be totally honest, I, like, I do value, what is it, uh, physical appearance, um, quite you a bit. You shallow bitch. Yeah, and, and <laughs> I try to work on it, um, like, I am actively working on it to this day of just, like, doing affirmations in the mirror because, yeah, I, I don't know, I was, I just have that, like very silent voice like i never like scoff at the mirror but just that silent little gremlin in the back of my brain that will just like immediately just like focus on negative aspects about my appearance and i'm just like why <laughs> you know mm -hmm. like some of it can help to just like feel a bit more fresh or cleaned up or whatever in a given day but most of the time uh it's exhausting so yeah so that's like one example of one that like would be on there um that yeah that i just work on but you know it is what it is yeah so that's the process uh want to talk top five yes let's, let's. Pew, pew, pew 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 top five top five i felt like a top five, <laughs> like a top five graphic yeah yeah yeah. it's like yeah. in um in uh jackbox games where they're doing the the quizzes and it's those like mm -hmm. jingles of like do 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 <laughs> one or whatever <laughs> i love how it was starting up really high and then it went into this drag queen voice <laughs> do, do, do one <laughs> so my uh, top five are gratitude passion nature truth and connection. And I defined these as the following. Gratitude is pretty much at the top of my list of values because gratitude is the way to cement any of my experiences, ideas, relationships, and even possessions as something worth taking the time to appreciate. If I don't actively appreciate where I'm at in life, I'll keep chasing more, better, newer, bigger, whatever, etc. Um, and the other thing too is I'll get into this with behaviors is like, there's no reason to have gratitude if I'm not living according to my values. Like gratitude is a way of checking in with myself to be like, oh, I'm really grateful that I made this effort to do something more important to me recently. Passion hmm. is whatever lights up when I'm aligning my lifestyle and choices with my values. So if I'm feeling grateful, then I'm living a passionate life. <laughs> it's closely tied to integrity because integrity means I'm doing what I say and feeling good about doing so. It also keeps me going through the drudgery or the bad days and opens me up to profound joy through the victories. Nature is this knowledge that I'm connected to the earth, to my fellow humans, animals, plants, rocks, <laughs> dirt. <laughs> All of it. Uh, I can microbes. This. Yeah, <laughs> um, my bacteria, my friends. <laughs> um, I can convey this in my work and use this sense of oneness to deepen my self care, which ties into activities and behaviors, which we'll talk about later. Truth, also known as personal honesty, integrity, and spiritual practice. So in terms of spiritual practice, am I making the time to remind myself of spiritual truth? Am I curious about religious traditions and what I can take from them? Do I respect other people's religious beliefs? And at the same time, do I value logic, fact-finding, research, precision of language even? This is also interpersonal honesty. Am I showing up in my relationships? Am I actually saying what I really think or what I really need? Um, do I respect someone for being honest, even if it hurts my feelings, but they're doing the same thing? Connection is related to that. Uh, being honest with myself allows me to feel connected to other people. If I'm not familiar with the way my own mind works, it's that much harder to relate to other people, empathize, be patient, listen, and share positive experiences. Um, also, the sense of connection is that little bit easier if I have this self-knowledge and like personal grounding to feel like I can still connect with someone who might be on the surface quite different from me. Um, but maybe deep down, we have more similarities. That's my top five. 
Uh, I'm getting my coffee head snap for that <laughs> one. Thank you. Top five. Five. <laughs> just have it's always just the drag queen low. in the back. <laughs> five. Da, 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 five. Um, okay, so clearly David had more time to do this and think this through and go in more detail. And I think I would probably make adjustments if I did the same myself. Because some of the ones I totally agree with, the ones that you picked, and I think relate to some of what I have. So my top five are humor, trust, art, romance, and optimism slash peace of mind. So these were different, but in that last one, I'll explain where my conflict came in. Humor for me was because it is just something that's been throughout my life. And it's why I do comedy. It's, I feel when I'm at my best and I'm most connected and most grounded and I'm enjoying myself the most, humor comes out. Silliness, playfulness, joy, and that. Can I yes. say, when uh, I think about a joke you made in an improv scene, uh, almost oh. every time I see you, it okay. was a show between you and our friend Dan, and you were a dance instructor or something, yeah. and you were like teaching him moves, you were like this very passionate, maybe like Latinx uh, dance instructor, and you were like, I will show you the moves. I will show you everything I could possibly teach you. It's time for the penetrada. And you like, <laughs> you flip Dan around, and then, yeah, you, you basically top him um, in this <laughs> dance move. And I just think about you saying, it's time for the penetrada. Like, so often, it's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> um, so yes, Robert is very funny, very talented. Oh my god, thank you. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, well, that's why I do improv. That's how I met David and why I love it because it's tied to humor. I think as a kid, like, humor was a way to, uh, like, relieve a lot of the stress in our family. It was, <laughs> like, source Boy, material I would go to. You know, uh, I love uh, my, my mom and dad were humorous in their own ways. My dad was very much, like, cheesy dad joke and, like, would always try to go for a laugh to lighten the mood. And then my mom was, like, dirty, raunchy humor. Um, so I think that informed who I am as a person today. So ultimately, it's just, like, something that I really value. And I feel if I'm doing it, it's when I'm at my best. And I also search for it in other people. Trust was my second one. And trust is sort of this... Because I think one of my biggest problems in life is I'm so self-critical and I can tear myself apart. Like I'm innately a, like confident, um, secure, and uh, like strong-willed individual. But the second I give myself an opportunity to pick at that, you know, like if I find something that could undermine that, I don't want to just undermine a little. I'll like take out my whole bloody foundation. So if I have trust in place, trust with the person I'm dealing with, or trust of myself, and I feel strong and grounded, then um, then I feel kind of like, you know, like at my best. And I really do look for trust in a partner, like I really want to be able to trust them. I also want my boss to trust me, so that I can do what I want to do in the way that I want to do it. And oh my god, I just... say it again. Oh my gosh, bosses that micromanage is like one of the fastest ways to just be like, well, okay, I'm not trusted and now I don't want to work for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, huge. And I've, and I've had micromanaging bosses that like just, you know, they want to know exactly what you're doing. They want you to follow their process and no other. They, they're, they're the type that don't want to be like, this is the destination I want to get you to. I want to take you on the whole bloody path and watch you as you step. Um, and that's the worst, right? They're, they're not about managing projects are about managing people and so a, a boss should understand how you work and what you do and so i need trust from a boss i need trust from in a partner i need trust for myself so number two number three is art because i am an artist and i feel like i actually was very disconnected from my art for a big portion of my career after university and i had to rediscover that to find my passion in it uh and Art means, like, artist making art means just being a creator. Like, you're doing things creatively. Uh, you know, it's come out in a lot of ways. I think performance is one of my favorites. But I also like media art, you know, like, in terms of, like, visual art. So I like drawing and I like painting. You know, painting something I discovered more recently. Um, so making things, creating things is important to me. And then I find a massive 
attraction and passion for other people who also uh, are creators and are you know have passion for something that they do and it doesn't have to necessarily be art um, but you know art is obviously a soft spot number four is romance so romance for me is just sort of like I do at times have a romanticized view of life and of people and what I would like to be able to do with my life and where I want to go with it and so Romance is something that I would like to have with a partner, but I also want to have romantic, like, approach to life. You know, I want to have sort of like dalliances and, and fun times and silliness and adventure and uh, just kind of like a romantic view. But I find it can also be problematic for me at times where, like, it sets up high expectations. So that's probably one I'd almost have to revisit, honestly, now that I think more about it. And then my final one was optimism slash peace of mind. And I was torn between these two because optimism, like I do find I constantly need a sense of hope. I need a sense of optimism and positive outlook towards the future. Because if I don't have that, then I feel like I'm lost. Then I feel like I'm listless. Then I feel like I don't have anything to work towards. And so I really do want to have that sense of like hope and optimism for the future i want to be just like if there's a bad situation find the good in it if there is something bad like covid's happening in the world i like to have that hope and optimism towards like things will change or things will improve or we will adjust that you know there is optimism for the human race and for our planet now why that was counterbalanced with peace of mind is because it's almost the counter of that and similar to your piece on gratitude of like if I have peace of mind and calm and um, gratitude sort of for the things that I do have and where I'm at and what's happening in the now, then does optimism matter? And so like it was sort of like I was torn between those two and, I, and I'm still trying to decide which one makes the most sense because like I really, really do enjoy optimism and positivity. But I also want to be able to just be happy with what I've got and where things are at and feel really connected with what I've got. So yeah. clearly, I'm still going through the process of these values, but that's where I landed. That's awesome. Um, that's that's really cool. Yeah, I appreciate that you came up with uh, a romance as a value because I don't... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you just came up with that yourself. It's not on this list. Um, isn't it? Isn't it? Oh, is it? I don't. I don't see it. <laughs> Where the fuck did I get that? I yeah, I think I, that's I that's a Robert these... original. <laughs> it's Isn't under love, it? love, romance. Oh, and okay. Yeah. Freaking okay. Oh yeah, there it is. <laughs> I was like, wow, that's that's some good self knowledge. You don't even need a list to tell you about yourself, <laughs> right? Um, still, uh, okay. I want to talk about this. This like. Oh, I really want to talk about this gratitude slash peace of mind slash optimism thing. Because, yeah, okay. Mm. And then we're going to talk about bringing values into alignment. Because this is, like, f fundamental. Um, let me just double check my note. Because I, I, I did write about this specifically. Uh, yeah, so gratitude, like, a gratitude practice for me is the process of checking in with my alignment to the other values. So, like what it means is basically you know <laughs> saying <laughs> i'm sorry i'm like struggling <laughs> I'm really struggling with that one <laughs> uh, <laughs> if i'm just like going through my day-to-day -day scrounging for things to be grateful for because i'm making the best of a bad situation it comes to a point where i should probably get out of this bad situation and that's like this balance that you and I have talked about off off uh, camera of like gratitude can totally be twisted into, well, you know, I'm grateful for how I can grow from being in a toxic relationship or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's just like, <laughs> I'm grateful yeah, okay. that I know that I don't like that my boyfriend is neglectful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or like, I'm grateful for how aware I am of how much this sucks. <laughs> like, it's yeah, like, yeah. yeah, this doesn't actually help you and uh at the end of the day it's sucky <laughs> like mm -hmm. self-awareness is not the same as taking action um yeah so gratitude really is for me about like appreciating the positive actions that you're taking mm. 
So I don't know if that helps with the optimism and peace of mind thing. It's sort of like that's where I would almost have prioritization. I'd I'd maybe pick gratitude before optimism. Mm -hmm. Um, But there is some, you know, let's get corporate words, synergy between the two, right? It's sort of like having joy and optimism, I think, might be generated from having gratitude first. Yeah. Um, It sort of depends on what you're talking about. Yeah. And peace of mind, too, is like is the um whatever the this too shall pass kind of thing Mm -hmm. like just being very zen um yeah so so it is tricky they had that one as three different words it was peace of mind tranquility and calm yeah yeah because like some of that is innate like going through specific struggles like doesn't necessarily shake your foundation as a human being of like, well, I've gone through hard things before. I'll probably get through this hard thing as well. Or like stuff like that. Mm. Um, so I don't know. Yeah. It's just like a very gray area thing. Yeah. I think everybody has to just walk that line <laughs> yeah. of being grateful, being accepting um, versus yeah. Becoming more uh, real with themselves and becoming more, realized or more authentic yeah and i think so things like tranquility and calm you know a a good example for me would be is that i you know for years now have been battling with the issue of my mother who's battling cancer and kind of taking that on myself and it's come and gone in various ways and we get different news and different outcomes and different you know prognoses and all that stuff and You know, that was a perfect example of, like, if you really do value optimism, or sorry, not optimism, but, like, peace of mind, calm, gratitude or something, you could kind of look at it two ways of almost the same thing, of, like, I I have gratitude that, like, right now my mom's health isn't horrible and that she is living her life. Um, But I also have, like, peace and tranquility that kind of comes of that, of being, like, if I can just have... The peace of mind and the calm to know that like even though there might be a bad prognosis down the road today nothing has changed today something is you know things are okay and mm-hmm. if you can find that peace and calm like i really really do value that mm-hmm. uh so it's it's hard because there, there's gray area overlap between those ones yeah yeah because this literally is like it's about zen practice and it is about presence and willing to accept the moment as it is without changing it or fixing it or running away from it or whatever. Um, And I want to say too, like, this is a bit of a motto in some countries or some uh, management, like how people are managing COVID. And it's the idea of like, we're all in this together. Like sometimes there is a major peace of mind that comes from not being alone. Um, Oh, huge. And not just COVID. It's just like any struggles in life. And that's why like group therapy exists. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, uh, another kind of interesting example, more comical maybe would be is like when you walk into your house and if it's a complete fucking mess, you know, like a value I have to get p- calm and tranquility out of that is to clean up that place. Right? Oh my God. Like, same. You know, it's just like, I do love that feeling of when you first walk into an, a B and B or into a hotel and there's something about like order and simplicity and calm that comes of that or going into a Zen garden, right? It's also very groomed and orderly and all that. And so I really do value that feeling. And so you could approach that walk into the dirty room to be like, you could either have gratitude. You could be like, I have gratitude that I have all these messy things, you know, or it could also be like, I find, you know, I have a greater value for calm and tranquility. So by order, ordering these things, cleaning these things, maybe getting rid of them to simplify them, um, maybe that's the value. So it, mm-hmm. it's, it can be a little bit of both. Yeah. Um, so let's just talk about accountability super quick. This is, uh, yeah, I mean, it's kind of a segue, like not being alone. If you have a friend in your life, I'm talking to the viewer. Uh, if you have viewer slash listener, it's a podcast. Uh, yeah, you can't direct that to me because I have no friends in my life. <laughs> Whoa. Um, yes, you do. Uh, <laughs> And actually, after this, I do want to start looking at getting this podcast, um, you know, somewhere. If you have somebody in your life that can uh, have a discussion about values, maybe not, maybe you both do this exercise, maybe you just share with them where you've gotten to with this exercise. 
to hold you accountable with whether you're living up to your values further down the road, that can be a super, super helpful type of friendship. Because what happens is you set up this framework for if you then go to that friend, complain about this and that, or talk about some goal or project that you're about to endeavor onto, that person will be able to talk to you about whether it is aligning with your values or whether your values are not being honored in that way. And it will help you feel like, oh my gosh, my values are real. And if it feels really good to have that conversation with someone, that's even more of a encouragement that like you're on a path toward feeling more in sync, you know? Hmm. Hmm. I don't know yeah, if you had no, anything I mean, to add. It makes a lot of sense. Right? It, and I think this is a little bit more of a woo-woo version of like just having that wing man, wing woman, wing person. Definitely. Um, that I think in different ways we do have in life, right? That's the person you bring to the bar. That's the person you run to when you're having trouble. That is a person you like trust enough that you have those deep conversations. But to be a little bit more specific executional to focus it on values and say like, hey, buddy X, these are my values. These are things I do really care about. And just having the knowledge of that. And then what happens, I think, well, in future conversations, you can then say like, hey, you know how you really value X? Well, when you were talking about that today, you're not really living up to that, or you are not really demonstrating that to maybe a, another person. It's just, I think, a nice little practical way of, of kind of having that wingman, but specifically for values. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. And oh gosh, I mean, even like the positive reinforcement too, of just like, hey, this sounds a lot like when we talked about, oh, did I lose you? No, I'm here. Okay. Oh my gosh. He's so still. I'm so <laughs> Such a good still. listener. <laughs> I'm, 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 when, uh, yeah, yeah. Let's just say I'm like, hey, uh, can we go on a hike? And then this friend is like, hey, hikes are you connecting to your value of nature isn't that right and i'd be like mm -hmm. yes <laughs> and it would just be yeah. really good right yeah so. or it'd be like you really value laziness so you <laughs> shouldn't go on that <laughs> you know totally. um well and also like it could be like you know you'll have various conversations with friends or something like i'm trying to choose choose between these two courses or i'm trying to choose between this job and this job and then your friend could be like well you really do value a b and c and it seems like this job or this course presents more of that because hell you not yeah. you may not see it for yourself hell yeah so all of that's well and good all of these ideals and lofty and uh woo woo talk about woo, values woo. <laughs> the woos and the who's uh, down in whoville <laughs> um we we gotta make it concrete you know you'll get an amount of satisfaction from thinking abstractly about many things in life uh but at the end of the day life is about action and contemplation so uh with with all of these values you can go through and talk about or think about what are the behaviors that would bring me closer to this value and if you don't have that behavior in place in your life a really helpful question that i asked myself is what have been the obstacles that have been in the way of me doing this up till now and how can I handle those obstacles? And Say then that just again. come up with a little strategy. What are the obstacles in the way of me achieving this thing? And then mm. you go down the obstacles and be like, oh, okay. So nature, I want to go on a hike. What's the obstacle? Well, I've never asked for a car to take a drive to go and hike. And now I have a car that I could drive <laughs> to go take a hike yeah. something but like i that. value the safety of people and so david in the streets is a bad thing so i do not want to exactly to i like to, to drive sex. with my tongue ah! <laughs> <laughs> just biting that the is the slipperiest wheel. steering wheel ever <laughs> wow uh that yeah no it's true i think that makes a lot of sense um you know to have somebody who can kind of call you on that stuff think you're touching on this now, but I'm curious a bit about like, how can we hold ourselves accountable? What are some of the things that we can do? Mm. So mm. <clears throat> the very practical me would be is just going through the exercise, come up with that top 10 or whatever it may be, and then like throwing it somewhere in your house, written out on a wall in a notebook, you know, make a little vision board, put it into like 
in little canvas prints and put them up on your wall and they can become those like inspirational posters that we had back in the yeah. 90s. Sure, it sounds cheesy, but sometimes it's just a good thing to kind of go back to and be like, oh, right, these are my things. These are my values. Yeah. But are there any others that you think that could become just a practice of how we hold ourselves accountable? Yeah, so, I mean, something that I just did the other day was just make, like a quote unquote ideal schedule and tried to just think through, you know, what would be a schedule that would feel personally gratifying and like in tune with my values. So after like going through this list of behaviors that I was talking about, I just like wrote them down in bullet points and then like looked at a week. I don't know if you can see that um, Sunday to Saturday and looked at like, okay, when am I usually awake? I'm usually awake 7 a.m. to 11 p.m then what days of the week might it work best for me to do X activity? But I also wrote per week to do no more than X number of these activities because you do get to a certain point. Uh, so for me, it's like six. Do, do no more than six, like whatever, like values like related. Exercise activities. six of your values kind of thing? Pretty much okay. because it does get to a point where it's like, you're you're gonna give yourself work you know and you'll you'll feel this sense of putting the effort in more than the enjoyment of these things mm, okay it's almost and like everyone, you're, you're trying to force the hand of it too much yeah well yeah and everyone has a personal line where it would just start to feel like too much so that's like where i'm gonna start with this thing of when i'm looking at my little schedule like making plans for quality time or uh, nice activities for myself. Give me an example um, of two. Yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> so like one example would be recording a podcast. Mm. <laughs> recording some sort of I have of zero thing. value in that. Okay, go on. Because, oh, interesting, interesting, interesting. Uh, boop. <laughs> oh, no, I've stopped recording. Yeah. Oh, we've trashed the session. Oh, yeah. Get oh the, the Zoom call is breaking up <laughs> drama <laughs> um because doing a podcast lines up with my desire to connect my desire to i don't know live up to some form of truth uh it's like a passion of mine it feels like i'm contributing something i can be playful i feel like it's a form of art like it's hitting like a lot of values of mine to just do something like this and a second one would be, uh, yeah, literally a hike. Like <laughs> I, I've said it a bunch of times, but yeah, yeah, because I'd be out in nature. It would be a physical activity. Um, it can be quite playful. It can be inspiring on an artistic level. It's very simple, which is another value of mine, simplicity. Um, it can be very connecting if I'm going out with somebody and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we can bond through that. All of these things. Cool. Okay. Okay. That makes a lot more sense. When you first started describing it, I was like, I was like, that sounds really weird. Like it's in a week. It's like on Tuesdays, I'm going to do, you know, like courage. I'm going to do integrity. On Wednesdays, <laughs> I'm going to do integrity. I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> like, how can right. you? But it, like, if you translate into a more concrete everyday thing, you could pull off in a week. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. It's like certain activities are more conducive to certain values. So I might as well just get into it. Um, because I've, I've dallied long enough. So for, uh, for gratitude, um, again, gratitude activities are like pretty simple. It's just like sit and reflect and just write down, you know, three, five, one thing that I might be grateful for. <laughs> just like check in and be like, <laughs> that was the weirdest I, progression of counting. Am I three, grateful? Three, five, one thing. Because <laughs> <laughs> I did that once. I, so some people will say like, Every day, write down 10 things that you're grateful for, and then you will be doing the work. And it's like, okay. Then I wondered to myself, is that actually like just digging like too deep? And will that be frustrating and feel like more work than it's worth? What if I could be thankful for one thing per day and that would be enough for that day? Yeah. And there's a and sense I of like simplicity and like... A genuine yeah. appreciation for that i can really like go deep with it as opposed to like yeah. go really shallow with a bunch of things maybe yeah and i feel like gratitude gra gratitude 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 it sounds like 
I don't know. Like no, no, no. High school like motto. <laughs> we're gonna have gratitude here. <laughs> it sounds we're cool. And it sounds gratitude. like a racist word <laughs> to me. Oh, oh dear, I didn't go that route. Um, <laughs> I feel like a value like gratitude is easy because it is so literally innate, like connected to the practice of like gratitude lists and stuff like that, which I think is good. I actually have an app I'm using now on a daily basis to do a little bit of micro journaling, um, and I do put a, a bit of gratitude check into that. That's great. But it's true that I don't think like other values could really translate well into that. So for like example, like if your thing was like courage, you couldn't get up and be like, today I'm going to be courage. You know, like it's like you actually have to have an action tied to it. So it's just like, I'm not going to write down the word courage and that suddenly becomes it. And you also don't want to be like, I'm going to jump off a cliff every day. <laughs> yeah. That is going to be my courage. There might be other things like, I'm going to try something new that I haven't tried before. I'm going to talk to somebody I haven't talked to in a long time. I'm going to say something that's been bothering me about, a, you know, somebody or some friend or something, you know, like, exactly. Yeah, I think certain values lend themselves to activities. Other ones you got to dig a little deeper. Exactly. Then with, with nature, some activities are, uh, hikes. <laughs> so uh, you just sound like you just were about to give birth. You with nature. Like, I, oh. I don't. Oh. Okay. God, the, the sounds are very odd today. <laughs> they are. With nature, I mentioned going on a hike like 50 times. Um, <laughs> also, meditating. It depends. Meditating is weird. I haven't done it that much lately, but um, it can it can be nice to just like stop and sit and just like focus on the breath or whatever um i'm gonna mm. try getting into tai chi i feel like uh doing did i just roll my eyes i feel like tai chi you did <laughs> you totally like it was like a judgment on like a woo woo form of physical activity and every one oh. of those elderly people in the park are now no <laughs> yeah oh god they're gonna go and very slowly <laughs> slap you with their tai chi at the start of, before I started recording this, I told Robert I wanted to be careful about not moving around on camera much. And now Fail. I've just devolved into a noodly mess. Um, <laughs> so Tai Chi... Noodly mess. I am considering, because it is time outside usually, doing just something like, you know, self-aware, physical. And it is. Literally, like, the practice of, a, of Tai Chi is about, like energy flowing through our bodies and like feeling how different movements but also orienting ourselves in different ways has a different effect on how we feel and uh, how we connect with our surroundings so like i do genuinely appreciate uh tai chi so i i'm probably going to try it at some point um a pet a pet is also connecting to nature in a weird way because it's an animal and it is a different way of sort of engaging with uh, the natural world Truth activities uh, involve not bottling things up, like checking in with myself. I'd like to journal, so checking in. Like, what am I actually thinking about and how do I deal with that in a constructive way? Um, have that tough conversation or whatever. Finding topics that feed me, so stuff that interests me. I tend to, like, get into ruts sometimes where I don't feel particularly curious or inspired into, like, reading or, like, watching shows or watching movies or whatever. So, yeah, I just write down some topics that I am interested in and would like to read about at some time in the future to remind myself that this is stuff that I dig, that I want to know more about. Contribution. Cool. Uh, oh, gosh. Connection, rather. Um, is, ooh, okay. So I wrote, as I explore my genuine curiosities, how can I bring people into that journey? How do I support other people in their journeys? Can I connect with the person, not just the interest? So like connecting with people for me is usually talking. I'm a talker. And sometimes people talk about stuff that I have not the foggiest idea where they're coming from. Um, and really like, for me, I, I like to work on the part of myself that can still engage and like be a like active listener and still gain something from the conversation, even if like I find it hard to relate to, or even might feel kind of small or like insecure about how little I know about this topic. But can I just sit back and maybe learn something from them? So that's it. Mm. I've said a lot. Those are my activities related to those top five. Yeah. 
I was really concerned when you started talking about the connected one when you went into a very dear diary moment. You were like, as I explore, and I thought you were going to be like, my body, <laughs> and I discover <laughs> that I'm a man. I was like, oh dear. He went um, into his journal. Yeah, I mean, that's worth mentioning. You know, my like in my values, there isn't like sexuality is not listed there, but like I would definitely say sexuality is like a major part of how I would connect with someone um, and intimate. <laughs> Uh, relationships. Well, yeah, so. and that's where it's. I think it is hard to come down to a top ten, let alone a top five. But that's why like romance ended up into mine because in some mm-hmm. way or another, it's almost like this is the thing. It's like romance has intimacy involved in it, kind of right. There is an expression of care and affection through romance, and similarly, I think like I think you had passion and in. in part of your list or something like that uh but like i think also passion it's almost like when i see somebody really care about something and be really involved in something and like obviously for me for arts it could be like i could be dating somebody who's super into science but if they're really passionate about it to me that's almost romantic because then i'm like ah i admire them and i am into them because they express passion and that is kind of a romantic sexual thing you know so it's almost like yes i love sex and i love intimacy but it's almost like there's a higher level quality to it you know that's the basal stuff um basal so it's like isn't that a word maybe not basal primal primal and basic primal. yeah bi- bi- yes yes <laughs> yes uh, <laughs> um but it's the it's the like bodily need versus sort of like the higher you know Maslow's hierarchy of needs thing. It's sort of like your body just wants the sex, but there is a level of intimacy above that that comes from seeing passion in somebody or seeing them being romantic or affectionate towards you or doing little things, saying things, whatever that might be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just laugh because I'm like, yeah, you know, relationships are mostly saying things. <laughs> yeah. And a bunch of doing too. But it's a balance. <laughs> there, yeah, there is a lot of saying. Um, awesome. So did that uh, inspire you at all with activities that relate to your values of humor, trust, art, romance? Peace of mind. Yeah, I think what it's going to do is this is going to take me now to the next layer of this exercise mm. in terms of um, trying to get a little bit more detailed about my values, but then also translating them into exercises mm. or activities, things to do. Yeah. Mm. Sweet. Yeah, and I want to reiterate. Mm. Oh, I thought that was just our cue to end the recording. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, clearly I love nature so much. He <laughs> just killed a Kills bug. flies with his bare hands. With my bare hands. He Rah. actually has, like, like bare hands, not, <laughs> not, like, unclothed hands. He literally has just, like, these furry, clawed exactly. hands. My, he has um, dew claws, and they never got removed. I want to repeat the thing about the obstacle. The obstacle in the way of our goals, because... It really, like, it's a game changer when you start thinking about your goals in terms of what's stopped you before. So, yeah, if anyone takes, like, nothing away from this podcast, but that will have done a good job. Because, yeah, I think, like, anybody can talk about, like, oh, these are, like, oh, I just want to be fit this year. Um, And... (laughs) And then, and then they'll be like, and they'll be like, okay, so I'll just go ahead to the gym now. Um, this is the then, weirdest accent combined with you just destroying your aim not to be noodly because you literally just flailed your arms as you said that. And then, and then they go, they go to the gym. They have, oops, they have no plan. They have no self awareness for what has stopped them in the past. They just like go at it kind of willy-nilly and then two four one month passes where, <laughs> where, I love where, counting where one week two months <laughs> millennia five seconds oh god um, <laughs> where they're not seeing the results that they were hoping for because they're not aware of what is getting in their way or what has gotten in their way in the past. So, yeah. So, mm. uh, it's great. All right. I'm clearly too loopy <laughs> to continue. And drunk. He is drunk, everybody. He is. <laughs> I barely drink. I had water. Ooh. Vodka. 
I just had a long day. I'm going to tell Robert about it off mic, <laughs> but... Let's yeah. dish after this. Yeah. I'll get the tea. Oh, God. Okay. All right. Live by your values. <laughs> or at least first figure out what they are. Yeah, figure out what they are. David just got COVID, by the way. <laughs> please, please don't say that. I've... <laughs> I just got back to visiting BC and I'm going to do like a seven day little quarantine trying to reduce my contact with family and just like, just, just in case, because I've seen people and like, uh, I'm not supposed to, to be healthy. So anyway. Yeah. I don't, don't worry COVID. people. He doesn't have COVID because he clearly already has a case of noodly arm. <laughs> I got, I got an noodly extreme arms. acute case. I got, I got them bad. He's I got, got the noodles. Bad. He's got the noodles. Okay, let's get out of here. Do you have a word of the day, Robert? <laughs> oh, no. Uh, we didn't find one. I'm just going to say noodle. Noodly <laughs> noodles. Um, Noodly noodles and weird counting. Those are the two things of the day. Your weird counting. <laughs> my, my word of this episode is accountability. Because at the end of the day... Let's try to do what we say and have some follow through in our lives. God bless everyone. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. Oh, if you like this podcast, uh, subscribe, uh, share it with a friend. You can follow Bit Button on Twitter and Instagram. <laughs>